What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope everybody is doing well. One of the items that I've brought up in a few of my videos specifically has to do with how difficult the current wallets are for using any sort of cryptocurrency, let alone DeFi, specifically around having to have a seed phrase, uh, remember your public key, your private key, because uh, specifically in the DeFi space, you really only own these assets if you hold your private key and or your public key. And I've mentioned before specifically around Ethereum, uh, since Ethereum is kind of the leader in the DeFi space, that because of smart contracts and because of the program, because of the programmability of Ethereum, it is possible to actually create wallets that use that uh, programmable function in Ethereum to simplify and add more features to the wallet to do things like make recovery easier, um, batch processing of payments. There's so many things that can be done. Well, um, Gnosis actually has done this with their uh, safe product that they're building. And uh, they go into it here in this article. And this really is showing that smart wallets are going to be the next gen wallets on Ethereum that will make it easier to bring on uh, people for mainstream adoption. Um, so I'm going to jump into the middle of this article here, specifically around the account types um, and then how their wallet is actually different and uh, what it will bring um, to the Ethereum ecosystem in addition to how it will bring in, uh, we'll call them the normies, um, into the space. Not all, uh, not all accounts on Ethereum are created equal, equally. There are actually two different types, externally owned accounts and contract accounts. To date, most accounts created on the Ethereum network fall under the category of externally owned accounts. These accounts are secured with a private key, often transformed into a 12 word seed phrase for the user. The onus is then on the end user to not lose this phrase. And if they do, uh, if they do, the funds in the account are lost forever. Sound awful? I'd argue this is one of the biggest barriers to mass adoption of crypto and it must be fixed. And by far, this is the biggest barrier um, for mass adoption of crypto. I have many friends and family members that I have attempted to get into crypto and their level of responsibility, even if you have a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars in crypto, um, the level of responsibility that you could lose that money just by losing this seed phrase um, or um, you know lose access to a hardware wallet that you have uh, really makes it difficult when people have been conditioned in the legacy financial system that they can just go to a bank and they can recover funds if they're lost. So we really need a way to actually bring those uh, safeguards that are in the current system into crypto. This is where the other account type on Ethereum comes into play. The contract account is secured by code, which allows for better security and a wide range of additional features that externally owned accounts cannot offer. Let's explore the depth of those additional benefits. So how smart are these smart wallets? At the end of the day, most users will want the same securities and guarantees that the traditional banking experience can offer them. Users are off offered fraud protection, withdrawal limits, and the general comfort of knowing their funds can't just be lost. So we can provide uh, so can we provide them on Ethereum? Well, given that we are now putting a layer of code on top of accounts, the answer is yes. There are a handful of features that rise to the top, all of which can greatly improve user experience, security, and trust in using the Ethereum network. At Gnosis, we are currently working on or have implemented all of the following ideas into Gnosis Safe, which is their uh, product that they're working on. Um, so this is specifically going into ways to recover your account um, outside of just remembering your seed phrase. Earlier in the article, I explained how externally owned accounts are secured by a private key, which if lost makes the account unrecoverable. With smart contract wallets, we can introduce new concepts around fund recovery, such as social recovery and time-based recovery. These options are still being researched for the Gnosis safe, but below are some examples of how the process could work. The concept of social recovery is perhaps the most interesting. 
Let's take an example and assume you have two family members and one friend that you really trust. You would be able to designate these three people as your backups in a social recovery setup in Gnosis Safe. Now, let's say you didn't have your seed phrase backed up and you lost your phone. Uh, that sounds like you're done, right? Traditionally, with an externally owned account, all of your funds would be gone. However, if using a smart contract wallet, you would be able to trigger a recovery, uh, trigger a recovery process to restore your funds, assuming the majority of your backups agree. It's important to note that your backups can never capture your funds. They just have unique permission to complete the recovery process. So it's sort of like a multi, sounds like it's a multi-sig process between the three people um, that would allow you to get access to your funds. For recovery, backups do not always have to be family or friends. They could also be a mixture of hardware wallet devices and other accounts that you have access to. So it definitely sounds like some sort of multi-sig. This idea can even be taken a step further to where the seed phrase concept is never even introduced to the user, something that may, many new people find intimidating. At that point, the user always falls back on social recovery in the case of a lost wallet. The other unique recovery option that can be enabled is a time-based recovery. A user would be able to tell his wallet that if no transactions are made for a year, another designated account can trigger a command and recover the funds. Uh, that one sounds a little bit more iffy, but um, not a bad idea. Uh, I do like the social recovery idea, and these are just two that they came up with. I'm sure there's a load of other ones that could be implemented, um, and these are the type of ideas that are still needed in the crypto space. Uh, Two-factor authentication. The feature that Gnosis Safe currently has implemented is 2FA something that most people are people use for their important accounts online. In this process, a user puts in their password and then is prompted again to enter additional passcode verification. This is a no-brainer for crypto transactions. Upon setting up a safe, the user is prompted to sync with a browser extension, which is then used to verify transactions. At any point in the future when the transaction is sent from the safe, the user must also confirm it in their browser. We currently are working on expanding the options for two-factor devices, including hardware wallet options such as status key card. So this is just standard, um, another layer of security when making payments. I'm sure most of you are used to this when you know, accessing uh, Coinbase or Binance. Uh, pay gas fees in ERC-20 tokens, it's, uh, it's kind of boring. Um, Transfer limits. Withdrawal limits are an extremely common security feature for the tr transitional banking system because they are a great way to prevent theft and catch fraud before it gets worse. This is also a feature that could be enabled with smart contract wallets. The user would be able to set their max transfer limit for any given transaction, uh, despite transactions to a predefined whitelist of accounts. If a transaction is triggered over the, that amount, to a non-whitelist address, the transaction would be halted until a set amount of time clears. During that time, the user could cancel the transaction. Um, blah, 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 about two-factor. So yeah, this is another nice feature um, that we have transfer limits right now when it comes to our normal fiat accounts and adding these into uh, um, you know the crypto space slash the DeFi space would be great. Uh, security. We'd be remiss if security was not talked about when discussing the evolution of smart contract wallets. We take security very seriously at Gnosis, and the Gnosis Safe has been thoroughly audited and formally verified. So it just goes into how they have a bug bounty program to make sure that these features and smart contracts that are being used are um, fully vetted through a bug bounty program. Um, and I just want to go over this last feature here. So batch transactions. Another great feature that the smart contract wallets can enable is the idea of batch transactions. As um, composability between dApps start to grow, this will become something that allows for much better user experience to the end user. Let's take, for example, the InstaDAP bridge, which allows users to move DeFi debt from one platform to another, uh, from Maker to Compound. If the user did this manually, they would have to go through 10 plus transactions instead of the instead the wallet can batch these for the user and bundle them into just one. And if you've ever gone through these major transactions, like when opening a CDP on Maker, um, you know, and you're actually using like a ledger, you have to you know manually confirm each transaction, which can be very annoying. So. Um, you know, this is something that um, will definitely make it easier and bring in um, the mainstream usage of these tools. 
Um, so th this is um, these are just some examples of some of the ideas of a smart wallet on Ethereum and what we can actually see in the future when it comes to more legacy financial type services that um, can be brought to crypto by programming these features into these smart wallets. And I mean, there's still a lot of room in this space for anybody to that has an idea to create that, I that idea or create a wallet that actually has those features by using these smart contracts. Uh, so I'll have a link to this um, article in the description. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and please share it. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That's all I got. Thanks.